Well, hello and welcome to the PMQ Live update for today, which is Thursday, October 8th. I'm here with a good friend, Mr. Carmine Testa, Carmine's Pizza Factory up in Jersey City, New Jersey. Say hello to the world, Carmine. Hello, world. Hello, Brian. Hello, PMQ. What's going on? Not much, man. I'm excited about this one. And again, this is kind of one of those last minute uh, on the book things. We just had a casual conversation and it said, hey, want to come on my show? So there's very little form to this, but it's a, a lot of the questions I'm going to ask is uh, questions that Carmine has answered at length because Carmine knows how to sell. Well, I was going to say Carmine, but a lot of other stuff. So first off, I wanted to give you that chance to just say uh, introduce yourself to anybody who doesn't know who you are. Uh, uh, you know, tell them who you are and what you do. All right, so my name is Carmine Testa. I'm owner of Carmine's Pizza Factory, downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, September 9th was my 20 year anniversary. Um, oh, wow, congratulations. So 20 years. And I'm also the dad of the Jersey Pizza Boys, those two little kids that spin the pizza dough like little ninjas and been all over national TV. So um, I've been doing pizza. I mean, I'm, I just turned 50, as you know, Brian, because you follow me on Facebook. I've been I've been making pizza since I'm 13, and I've had my first place since I'm 20. So uh, wow. yeah, I, I got I got at least 30 years experience, man. Well, I want to congratulate you too. You went on a, at least a years long journey to for that 50. You did like getting healthy again, working out, and I was following you, and it was shaming me uh, as I'm sitting there eating my bowl of ice cream, screw correct. <laughs> but you did a great job, and it you know it's just inspired me to get back into it as well. So congratulations on that. So. Uh, 50, owner for 20, been in it for longer than that. So I, I guess this kind of kind of brings us to the crux of it. Um, we'll just kind of jump in. Uh, what is your typical New Jersey-style pizza? Is it different from New York? Uh, and then maybe is that just if you don't serve that at Carmine's, what does Carmine serve? So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you just a quick little history lesson of the progression of pizza in the last 30 years. When I, when I started in the pizza business, we used to have four varieties on the counter, and that was it. Three of them were New York style, cheese, pepperoni, and a white slice. Sometimes we get creative and go white broccoli. We mix it up, and you'd always have a Sicilian. So you'd have your cheese, your pepperoni, your white, and then you had a Sicilian. That basically was like, you know, the gambit on the pizza we made. Then, of course, you know, you could be creative with the toppings. Um, it wasn't until, I guess, about 10, 12 years ago, you know, you started seeing people get a little bit more creative and a little bit more creative that, you know, we had to up our game and uh, start to make, you know, different kinds of pizzas. So I would say New York, New Jersey style is predominantly what we do, followed by okay. your pan pizza now, because with the pans, we do Sicilians, grandmas and even, you know, some Detroit styles. OK, so, I mean, it, it's kind of spans span. Uh, several different styles. You're not if, even if New Jersey style is its own particular style. Carmine does not pigeonhole into just doing that. You want to provide right because I I don't know is it because you know New Jersey tends to get a lot of tourists you know for for Atlantic City um, and stuff like that. You want to be able to cater to everybody, but also that hometown crowd. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what's uh, the next question was you know have you weathered the pandemic? And I always hate to ask these, but I mean you guys were up there in kind of that first hot spot. And it's been a roller coaster up and down for everybody all over the place. I mean, how have you guys weathered up there? I know you're, you're lucky enough to still be, you know, going gangbusters. Right. But uh, was right. there something that you did different that maybe somebody else down the street didn't do or that you could tell anybody? Or, I mean, just um, what is it looking like for you guys today, I should say? Let's forget about the past. What's it looking right. like today going forward? You know, my, my business model is, well, first of all, let me describe my place. I'm, I'm a neighborhood corner spot in a historic brownstone. So I do get some, you know, walking traffic. We do get some dining traffic, but predominantly my business model has always been pizza, right? Downtown Jersey City, if you're not familiar with Jersey City, it's like a mini, it's like a mini smaller version of New York City. Same kind of demographics, mm -hmm. just less volume. So, you know, it's mid rises, it's apartments, there's no parking. So people come home, they're not, you know, unless they can walk to the corner and pick up whatever they want to eat. They're calling for deliveries. So predominantly, 
we've always been a delivery based pizzeria and with covid just by luck our business model was the winning thriving business model um because you know now nobody's going to work kids ain't going to school they got to stay home we were deemed essential workers like we i've never stopped working my staff you know knock on wood yeah. nobody went down with it we were really really lucky like honestly i'm going to probably use the word lucky a bunch of times with you today because really that's what it came down to um true so we just got really busy and as of right now you know six seven months later um we are working on a six day work week as opposed to our normal seven day work week our gross is pretty much the same as last year minus one day and um hmm. you know the weekends have really picked up especially on friday and saturdays football just started so the last couple of sundays with football have been you know really busy unfortunately football for us like when the giants and new york giants when the new york jets are somewhat competitive it'll actually be busier but you know the giants are all four ready and the jets i don't think they're doing well either so i, I already seen like when the <laughs> giant game and jet games we're not as busy as potentially we could be but overall well, man you know it's that good we didn't realize this from from this point of view but like we've been prepping for this without realizing we've been prepping for this for the last 25 30 years and then it's like okay phones are ringing like crazy what do you do you you need more delivery drivers you need you know another one or two people inside we were lucky enough to to get that and then there was some nights where we had to stop answering the phone. We had to like, you know, turn Uber Eats off because it was like just shooting papers out of our fax machine. You know, that it was, it was insane. <laughs> so I can't complain about that. I also have a mobile business, Jersey Pizza Boys. So I have a wood fired mobile oven and we do a lot of private and um, corporate events, which clearly this season was completely, you know, it tanked. I think I did like six events so far. It's the middle of October where, um, you know, this time last year, I was probably on about 70 or 80 events, you know? So, you know, you win some, you lose some. I can't hear you, Brian. What are you saying? Lost the volume. Hold on one second, Brian. I got to get my glasses. Hold on. Carmine, come back. It's me. I muted myself. Oh, I hear so you now. I hear you now. What you do? <laughs> that was on me. I'm sorry. Okay. I have to blame the I'm producer. Like, I didn't touch nothing. I swear. I didn't touch nothing. Don't touch nothing. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it sounded like you didn't really lose employees. You've lost a day of business, but you're actually doing better. I mean, what do you kind of attribute that to? Is it more people just trying to order out? And again, pizzerias have been lucky because they are kind of already built for that carry out delivery model. Right. Um, but I mean, you, you were able to weather this and actually maybe even, you know, at least stay the same without your loss of day of business, but you didn't lose many employees. Um, right. I mean, is, is there anything else that you think attributed to that uh, as far as what Carmine's did? Or is it just the nature of people wanting to have people you, listen, deliver stuff you, to them? You make, you make your own luck. So clearly when the phones were ringing and everything was going crazy, we didn't drop the ball. We were able to you know, accommodate all our customers. We were able to put out a good product. So, you know, we were ready. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So I think that really helped that, you know, we just, we were, we were ready. Also, well, don't forget, like even now, you know, kids are homeschooling. Um, a lot of people are home from work. So our lunches are not that busy. Even now, our lunches are not yeah. that busy. But four o'clock through nine o'clock, it makes up for whatever lost lunch we would have in yeah. revenues. And some, because people are just home. There's nowhere for them to go. They can't go to the movies. You know, you can't really, there's not many places that you can go. I mean, it's loosened up a little bit, but overall, you know, people are just pretty much home. Yeah, well, I get it. And that um, kind of brings me to this one thing. I just had to, you know, uh, recognize my mother. She is your biggest fan. And she, um, this is, goes out to you, mom. Uh, but she also, I know she went on an adventure. She always takes her savior, Super Ted, with. He's I love that. on a cruise ship there little jerk uh but he made his way over to new york <laughs> that bear boy um, that bear's got more places than we've gone i can tell you what yeah and that bear's older than pretty much all your kids i think too um <laughs> it, it, the flat the new york weatherman uh now we're getting over to uh carmines and there you go Liberty there we go State right Park. there you go 
See, so, that's my uh, spot yeah. right there. A little corner, a little corner brick stone, a, a little corner spot, you know, neighborhood spot. So, um, yeah, no, it's awesome. good. I, well, I just listen, had to throw that You got to tell your mom, you got to tell your mom I stole her idea because two years ago when we went to London, my daughter, you know, she would bring all her toys with her if she could. So we let her only pick a few. And one of them was her little Lala, Lala Loopsie doll. And I loved what your mom did with the little bear that she would take pictures everywhere. So Chloe's little Lala Loopsie doll was all over London. She went to, you know, we got to see Big Ben, the London Bridge. Right. She went on the, the boat ride, the subway, the subway, where they call it the tube. So I the stole tube. your mother's idea and I took yep. pictures of, of the doll all over, all over London. Well, I did tell her that, and I couldn't remember where you went. And I'm glad it was London because that's actually where Super Ted was born. Uh, it's a British superhero. Um, and really? after my mom was in her accident, uh, she got this, and this got her through all that without that's, going into you know, that's, that's an amazing. I don't know how many people know that story about you, your mom, man. That's that's an amazing story, bro. Uh, it is. And one day, maybe I'll just have her on because she is my pizza team and your pizza team. She's our, all uh, our biggest fans. I will fans, so. absolutely tune in to watch Mom <laughs> And she's got a story to tell, dude. Listen, there'd be no you. You know, you talk about how, how am I doing? How am I sending a pizza out? There would be no you if it wasn't for your mom. Absolutely. So thank you, mom. Uh, Carmen loves you. She loves you, Carmen. So moving on. Um, I wanted to say, I was going to ask, did your customers accept uh, the changes that came through or did they give you that typical New York attitude? But it sounds like they, they, they went along with it. I think they understood. You didn't have to really fight people against it. Was there any kind well, of well, Brian, let or me, pushback? Let me ask you a question. What do you mean by New York attitude? Let me hear your what? definition, and then I'll let you know what the customers did. What do you What do you mean by you people? No, <laughs> just it's <laughs> give, no. It's honestly it's American attitude of what we dealt with. Um. One example would be um, when my delivery drivers would come in and out. You know, they're supposed to wear the mask. But um, if, say, like there was a pizza in the oven and they had 30 seconds or, or a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it was, they might pull their mask down here, grab the soda, take the soda. Yeah. Um, you'd have someone banging on our storefront window, screaming at the top of their lungs in a New York, New Jersey kind of way, how like, you know, they needed to put their mask on, right? Now you take that attitude and then you flip it. And we also had customers come in and they didn't have a mask on. And I try as a business owner to anticipate problems. So I try to have like a backup plan. So, you know, I know some customers are probably not gonna have a mask. So we had, Boxes of masks, gloves, sanitizer right in the front area where we let people in. So if they didn't have a mask, we could diffuse the situation immediately by going, no problem, there's a mask for you right there. And it's a clean, brand new mask that they put on. But, you know, you'd have that one person who refused to put the mask on, would scream at us. And uh, I actually took a bottle of water because they were taking uh, um, out of our soda machine. They were, they were getting their beverages. And... One of my employees was like, sir, please, can you please put that mask on? And he turned around and he threw the bottle of water right at her. And just coincidentally, like two days before that, my brother-in-law is really handy. He hung from the ceiling this gigantic piece of plexiglass that, that covers the whole you know, surface so there's no contamination, but it has a little spot on the bottom that we can slide people's food to. You know what I mean? So I don't know if the guy realized that that was there or he really tried to take my, my employee's face off, but he threw the bottle of water at her. So New York, New Jersey style, we had people screaming at us that we didn't have our mask on. And then we had customers throwing shit at us because they don't want to put their mask on. So welcome to New Jersey. Brother. Well, it's well, yeah, it's not even that we every place, every town, we all have those people. But I mean, you know, just uh, I just wanted to see how they accepted it. And it's one of those things where they have to kind of accept it and keep going forward because, again, we're we're not out of it. So we just need to make sure. But um, that's that's a crazy horror story. I, I really hope that he knew that that was there before throwing. Water I, I, I with, don't uh, know. You know I wasn't person. there. I'm going to. You know, like, yeah, I wasn't there because if I was there, I don't know if he would have been able to walk out on his own two feet. He would have went out. But I don't know if he would have been on his own two feet. You know what I mean? So No, I have no doubt, especially seeing some of the stuff you've been lifting lately, too. So, uh, 
So you know, I'm um, like a pop band. You know, <laughs> the philosophy is that the customers are always right. Uh, every once in a while, they're not. You know what I mean? Every, every once in a while. And, uh, you know, I'll definitely, I'll defend my employees, you know, it, however I need to, you know? Well, yeah, we can only extend that adage as far as it goes until they become unreasonable. And that's right. that's what it is. You're yeah. right within reason. Um, so I wanted to move on to creating a pizza empire because uh, I met you years ago, eight years ago. 2012, now, man, baby. March yeah, 2012. Was it March? Yeah. And I was trust me, I was looking for that footage all day. But, uh, you know, uh, this kind of goes into kind of raising a pizza family. I wanted to ask some questions about uh, when did your kids get interested in spinning pizza? And I'm going to try to, while you're talking, I'm going to pull up that footage from the first time I met them. And I do want to say that, yes, I discovered them, but only because Carmine made me discover them. And then they went on to greatness. So I have, <laughs> I'm going to ride that coattail. I'm going to be hanging on to it. As no long problem, as I can, brother. But, well, I'll, I'll tell you but, what, out of everybody, out of all my new pizza community family that I've made over the last eight years, I will absolutely go on record and say you were number one. You were the first person that I met. There he is. That was in Atlantic City. What was that? That was, I think that was the Vesuvio Food Show. And yeah, the I, Her at, at Harrah's, uh, north, best of the Northeast or something like that. Yeah. And that's Michael. This kid, he could drive now. Yeah. And there, there's your throw dough right there, and that's and that's how we got to know each other because I ordered some throw dough from you. But um, that's that's pretty it's, cool. So I mean, but I mean, and, and there's uh, uh, Ant or I'm sorry, <laughs> Nicholas over there. I always want to call him Anthony, but I mean, so, but he was already ready to go. Uh, Michael and then your and daughter, Mickey, she yeah. was barely. He was, he was like on the back burner. He was watching Michael. He saw the attention Michael was getting, <laughs> and he's just like, you know what? I can, whatever my brother can do, I can do. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, when your daughter their, was there too, their personality really walk, is going to be any different, right? Michael, he's the older one. Michael is super technical. Like, Michael is a, a, a professional. Nikki is good, but he's more of a comic relief. Like, he's just, he's the X factor. He makes, he makes it work in his own way because the things that come out of his mouth, sometimes they might not be appropriate for a 9, 10, 11, 12 year old kid to say. But what he says is like so funny at the time he says it. You know what I mean? So exactly, you can't even, you can't I think he's mad for, for, for too long. You know? Well, I, I'm pretty sure I probably know where he gets it. So <laughs> my wife, I know my wife. I, oh, really? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I mean, okay. So they were interested early, but I mean, this was kind of the spinning aspect of it. Were they always kind of interested in the pizza business itself? Because um, this is all leading up towards how do you nurture that um, that family that family business feeling and you know kind of when do you nurture it and when do you back off uh you know yeah when can you finally tell if maybe they're not interested so i guess the next question is you know well that is that's what it is is that's the question you know, when do you know to encourage it and if they show no right. interest you will at least maybe try once okay so so take the pizza tossing aside because again lucky right, right. just just lucky um if i was a carpenter my sons would have been coming to side jobs with me, handing me the nails and the hammer, right? If I was a mechanic, they'd be handing me like the brake pants. I come, my parents are, you know, born in Italy, I'm first generation here. You know, my parents never, ever persuaded me not to go to school. But at the same time, my father was like, get up and come help me, whatever he was doing, right? And right. what that did for me, and I didn't realize it as a child at the time, but what it did for me is it gave me such an advantage as an adult because things that came kind of like natural to me, other people kind of struggled with because they were somewhat sheltered or, or not really put pressure on them when, when they were a kid. Mm -hmm. um, so or not even said, pressure, you know, but nurtured. Just it's not even pressure. It's like it's nurturing, though, too. It, it, listen, it's it's teaching so many things, right? It's you know you are yeah. waking them up on a Saturday, they can't sleep all day, so they got to get up, they got to come to work with daddy. Daddy's fun, by the way. Just just so you know, <laughs> they come to the picture with daddy. They have a lot more fun if they, if they just stay home. But you know, it's dragging them out of bed, getting them you know brush their teeth, get them ready, come and 
my philosophy at work was always, you know, before I give you the, the Wi-Fi password, before you're in my office with your feet on the desk, you know, scribbling on my important papers, you know, you're filling the soda machine, you're changing the napkin, you're, you're filling up the shakers, you know, the pizza guy, you're helping roll the dough. Very, very hands-on. And what I think is so important about that is that, you know, listen, Michael, Nikki, they want to go on to become doctors or lawyers. God bless them. I'm, I'll be so proud. I'll be so happy. But I'm teaching them work ethic. I'm teaching them responsibility. But one of the really great things that I, I think um, is maybe not looked at that I feel is like I'm their dad. I'm responsible. I have mm -hmm. to I have to feed them, right? I have to buy them their sneakers. They want a video game. I'm gonna I'm gonna get them their video game. I might say no a little bit. But then I'm gonna show them the what a feeling for like a ten year old kid and work six hours. You know, make 40 bucks, 50 bucks, and then be able to stop at GameStop and pick up his own game. At 10 years old, he made that money, and he got to pick out something. Obviously, that was appropriate PG-13 kind of a game. Right. But what I'm trying to say is the feeling, it, it's like it's like um, you're feeding it's that passion. Ownership. And then it's yeah. like, hey, Dad, can I come to work with you next Saturday? Hey, Dad, can I come to a pizza party with you? Because – they want things, you know what I'm saying? So I think across the board, it's it's been super helpful. And I think regardless of whatever they do as an adult, I, I think it's just going to make them better at whatever they do. No, and I, and I think that's great. And it's, it's um, you know, you, it gives them that feeling of ownership or just uh, um, going out and it's like you're earning your own money. I remember the first time I was trying to get, earn my own money to buy something for myself. It was, I think it was a Ninja Turtles 2 VHS. And I don't even think I had enough to cover it. My mom was nice yeah. enough to give me <laughs> the money. But, you yeah. know, that's the money that I had. But, I mean, I think, like you're saying, there's a whole lot of different lessons that you're teaching there. It's like you got to get up early. got to do this. Nothing comes easy. you got to put the work in to get the benefits from it. Um, but then they, have, they show that talent. They show that natural talent for the spinning. I can't do what they do. Now, granted, back then in 2012, they started just doing the, that spin. I still can't do that, but they've they've adapted, and I've got more. And I wish I had the one was a Gangnam Style, or which is the one where they're all neoned up um, right, with the lights. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they they yeah they've they've adapted so much. I mean, you, they're they're obviously having a good time there. Um, they're a little bit older now. That's eight years ago. Uh, how old was Mike, and how old was Nikki at the time? Michael is well at the time when it started. Michael just turned eight. He was like. Two. And Nikki was five, going to be six. There's a two and a half year difference with them. Right now, Michael's 16 and Nicholas is 13. And this this um, Sunday, we have a show in North Jersey sponsored by Lamborghini. It's an Italian heritage festival. And they have some like really well-known Italian comics and singers and other artists. And the boys are going to open the show. So like, you know, it's it never goes away. See, that's that's the really cool thing about the viral videos and, you know, with the marriage, with the pizza, right? So, like, the viral videos that we had weren't like some of those other viral videos that you see were kind of like by chance, a funny thing happens, but it's not something you can duplicate it, right? Like somebody falling down the stairs and, you know, it's just it's funny and, and you laugh at it because they didn't get hurt. Um, the great thing about what the boys do, it's a talent that they could repeat and do it over again and then – Pizza being such a big part of our culture, there's pizza festivals, there's Italian festivals, there's National Pizza Day, there's National Pizza Month, there's Pepperoni Day, there's National Cheese Day. So, you know, being so close to New York City, you know, I guess we're on speed dial for a lot of these TV shows that need that <laughs> three to six minute, you know, pizza segment. You know what I mean? What? Oh, they little so, mustaches. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that cool? But well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, you're saying being that close to New York City, I get that you're you're in that proximity. They, you know, you can get there. But you were talking to me about. I remember you called me one time. It's like, should I? You were asking me about what you should do as far as like people in China and and other places. You know, yeah. I think you felt bad about putting your boys out there that much. You wanted to make sure you were doing it right, which I right. thought was awesome because there are so many. You know, we hear all the horror stories of of, of child stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, that, and I not having children or having to have this thing, I try to advise as best I could, but yeah, man, I tell you what, you took it there and these guys, look at this. I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, yeah, I, 
I remember the conversations I had with you, bro. Cause like I told you, you were my first pizza buddy. Um, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, you know, we, I said no, probably I said no to Mexico. I said no to Australia. We said no to Hong Kong, um, South Korea, uh, probably one or two more. Cause in the beginning I was really scared to go to a different country with my kids because God forbid something happens and I don't know the laws there. And, you know, I don't want to be one of oh, yeah. on the news that, you know, the American embassy has to try to get us out of freaking jail, you know, just <laughs> who knows, you know what I mean? So it wasn't until they got a little bit older that, you know, we, we've been to the UK. Um, we've been to um, Canada. We've gone to Italy, uh, Portugal. Are you so burning one of a little my bit older those? now. So they get it. I feel a little bit more comfortable with, you know, going overseas with them. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, uh, but uh, that's what I liked about it is that you were definitely taking the right route. You, you didn't want to just um, capitalize on it. You, you had the, uh, their benefit at heart for sure. So right, that's what yeah. I was wanting to say is like at a certain point when they say, I don't want to do this anymore, dad, I got tired. I mean, are you going to be like, yeah, that's your decision. Um, I didn't know if, uh, I mean, it's about, you have to gauge if people want to come in to your family business. And the difference is on this, they're doing a lot of spinning and they're getting a lot of publicity. Are they doing, are they taking any kind of interest in the culinary side? Um, and in um, that personal so, question, so, yeah, aside, so it actually, matter. I'm just the, yeah, so so the last three shows they did were them actually making pizzas. Of course, they uh, yeah, want to see been... them always spin, but they actually, right. you know, when I talk to the producers, I would say, hey, you know, do, do you, do you think that they could actually make pizza? And, you know, you, sometimes it takes a little selling because, unfortunately, they want to see the same, you know, that same thing over and over again. And I'm trying to make them evolve mm. and stay relevant, you know. So the last three shows they did, they were able to make some pizza. Michael, you know, we have the mobile units and I'm telling you, man, I take Michael with me and Michael takes over making pizzas. Nicholas right now is really good watching the oven. So like that's going to be a whole new thing, you know, with the mobile next season. This, you know, this season I was looking forward to it. It just didn't happen. Like next season, man, you know, I want like visualize two little girls or two little boys with like a lemonade stand. Right. Boys are going to be right. out there with their mobile oven, man, doing parties and stuff. So I'm excited about that, you know. Well, and that's, I mean, again, that was, uh, I'm sorry, dumped uh, something over my face there. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying is that uh, I, I know a lot of people, spinners too, young guys come up and they start spinning and then they want to get into the culinary side and show that off. And that's great. Right. Um, I wanted to make sure that they were they were interested in that. Not yeah. make sure, it's not a wellness check, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, you know, no, I, I wanted to see if, if they were. You know, the, the, the spinning is amazing. The, the spinning is on so much fun. It opens up so many doors. Um, but, you know, the culinary, it's, you know, you, you, you consider one of the, the world's best pizza makers. That's that's going to get people's attention. That's going to that's gonna drive people through your through your business front door. You know what I mean? Well, and this was the, their initial just foyer into the industry, too. So, right. um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of young people, they get interested in the family business early on. They want to do their own thing. And a lot of times they come back, too. It's a matter right. of the main question was you as the, the, you know, the patriarch. How hard do you push that? How much leeway do you give them? I mean, I don't want to say leeway, but, you know, you got to respect their wishes and see what they want to do, but nurture oh, yeah. their path. No, no question about it. Listen, their calendar and be, before I do anything with them, I always have to check with my wife and I'm just like, hey, you know, uh, nice. October 11th, what's going on? And she'll be like, oh, Michael's got <laughs> wrestling or Nikki's got soccer. And then, you know, I know it's something that, you know, we can do. But if the day is available and it's something that I know would, would be cool and there's more opportunities potentially for them. Then yeah, so then we go do it, and, and they enjoy it, and then you know they make a couple dollars when they when they do stuff. So I mean, it's it's kind of a win win win. But in regards to like their thirteen and sixteen year old social life, I mean, dude, they are so they are so busy just with friends and school and football and soccer. And you know, Michael wrestled this year for the first time. So you know, it's um you know the the pizza stuff has kind of taken the back seat to you know the teen years, you know what I mean? So I want them to enjoy that. I, you know, I don't want to take anything that, away from them. Well, absolutely. It's that formative years right now where they're, they, this was um, their passion early on. It might change, but uh, I don't, it doesn't seem to be that way. So, you know, I, I love just kind of talking to you about how you kind of grooming your pizza family. You're like, call it a pizza empire. 
Um, and then your daughter, she's she was like barely walking size at that time. But uh, I, I've seen her spin. And again, sometimes she can do some of the spins that I I don't know why yeah. I can't master she that could, stuff. She could get that, that nice rotation going, but she's, she's a little <laughs> bit more difficult to teach. You know what I mean? I, you know, so here's so here's what's weird. It's that, you know, I raised my boy when I was a small. My daughter just laughs at me. She just absolutely laughs at me when I raise my voice. So it's like, that's it. She called my bluff. I can't. <laughs> I can't do now. What can I do? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then you don't push those bounds. Once you realize it's like, no, you, you, you can talk some sense at that point. Uh, you, you talk some sense into her. But, uh, all right, so um, – you encourage. I don't think you even had to encourage it early on. And you were talking about that they just kind of grabbed onto it, and it wasn't only for spinning. I mean, I think we answered every single question I had there. Five of them right there. So, um, how? Did, and I was going to say, how did he come to the decision for to promote the boys as much as possible? Um, I, here, here's what I want to say again, just real quick, kind of touch on this. How did you manage the promotion of their talent? Because I know there are other people out there now with young people who are actually spinning, and they're kind of. I don't want. Well. I'll say it, they're following the model that you've kind of set uh, as far as getting the promotion on that and, and nurturing these people. How did you manage that? I mean, did you walk the beat as far as their promotion? Did you just knock on doors? Um, again, you're in New York, close to New York. So you had a lot of close access yeah. to some of these, these yeah. uh, early morning talk shows and things like that. But right. what, what, what is the best tip you can do for somebody who has a, a talented uh, pizza child? be it spinning or culinary, what's one of the best things you could do to promote them that's not detrimental to their growth? Okay. So, well, um, I do appreciate that you acknowledge the Jersey Pizza Boys were, you know, the original. So, yes, thank you for that. Um, in regards to um, promoting, really, it's you have to say yes to events that maybe you necessarily don't necessarily think, like, why would I want to go to, like, a Harley Davidson motorcycle, you know, bike <laughs> tour, but they want the boys to perform. And, you know, I'm like, hey, we got nothing to do that Saturday anyway. And, you know, I'd be cool for the boys to see motorcycles, right? So it's it's like I would have to find something to do that Saturday to entertain them anyway. So this would be cool. And, you know, they're going to make 200 bucks each. And then what happens is, you know, uh, there's someone that has a bike, but, you know, they – are connected with, you know, Good Day New York. And then like, oh my God, you got to talk to my brother, sister's cousin because she's the talent booker on, you know, this morning news show. And then three days later, I'm getting an email. Oh, you know, my friend told me the boys were great. Can you send me a video? And then boom, we're booking that show. So that's probably the intangible thing that, that, that won't happen all the time, but that happens a lot. It's you, you get doors open, that you don't necessarily think are even there to open, you know? And uh, so that is definitely part of their continued success of doing things. And then also, you know, again, you know, you talk about work ethic, right? Like anytime we do a show, the boys are please and thank you. We're always mm -hmm. there early. Um, we, you know, we're not prima donnas. We're not, you know, we're not asking for, you know, crazy stuff. We're very easy to work with. The boys are talented, so they're not shy to be in front of the camera. They absolutely um, are entertain people. So it's one of those things where they have the the reputation now of you know, hey, you know, you need a couple kids to do something. The Jersey Pizza Boys, they're good, man. They're professional. So that counts a lot because, like us in the pizza industry, right? Like we all kind of know everybody, right? Yeah. TV producers, they all know each other. They've all worked with each other. There's a lot of freelance that goes on. So I mean, I can name I can name a producer um, that we did the Dr. Oz show with in 2014 that went on to work on two more shows. And both times that there was a pizza segment pitched, I'd get a phone call before he would pitch. He'd be like, "Hey, are you okay to come next Monday if they if the producers say yes?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So. This one producer worked on three different shows and we were his three pizza segments on three different shows. And he would always call us because we always made him look good. We came, they were great. They made everybody laugh and, and uh, it was a success. So, you know, work ethic, good work ethic and just 
got to say yes to things because you don't know where things are going to lead. Well, and that just leans into what you're teaching them as well. I mean, they can get in there and they can get in their head that they're superstars. Uh, but you always, like you said, you have to have that respectful attitude when you go in. It's a job. It's you're a job, still right. being paid to do this job. But um, again, this is getting into a lot of politics of how you manage your children and, and stuff like that, which I personally don't have any experience with. But I, I wanted to ask you, you know, how, because I've seen you from, you know, at least the last eight, eight years and I've seen it go really well. And, right. and all I see is that these kids, man, they love it. So that's 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 really good. And, you know, they're Galbani sponsors or ambassadors, I should say. Galbani who's the sponsor of our U.S. Pizza team. Um, right. These guys are out there in those blue shirts all the time. So and we appreciate all of that. So we love we love um, the Galbani blue, man. We love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not happy. Listen, I was so happy that I that I won the championship last year, the Caputo Cup using Galbani because, you know, um, it was it was a good feeling that, I, that they like the boys so much that showed interest in them being brand ambassadors. And then just to be like, Oh, check out this trophy. And I used Galbani. So it was like, you know, almost like I felt a homage, like, Hey, thank you. And this is how I'm thanking you. You were part of my, you know, my win. So, you know what I mean? No, I, I, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, a lot of our U.S. Beats team uh, has the Galbani jackets. Actually, everybody across the industry does. I mean, you know, everybody on whatever team, whatever right. affiliation um, uh, uses Galbani. So, and this, again, you know, while I'm talking to you because, and I asked Galbani, I'm like, does he, they, they use Galbani. So I wanted to make sure I got them some notification as well. Because oh, yeah, man. They're, they're out there my, the my two distributors, you got to see how I yell at them when they run out of Galbani. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And that's, like, and that's what the thing. I'm like, listen, no, I'm going to, I'll use this today, tomorrow. I don't know what you need to do. If you have to drive to Buffalo and pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, and then we appreciate everything that Galbani does for our team uh, and the industry as, as well. So I uh, definitely wanted to let them know that, but that actually segues into what you were saying though, is about the future of competing in person. And, you know, you know, we used to be able to get out there and do a lot of stuff in person and, and talk to each other and, and, and get tips and stuff like that. Now, be it culinary or acrobatics, I mean, what do you see as a future of in-person competitions? I know a lot of people have been trying to come up with um, competitions that we can do virtually, our, ourselves included, and I'll promote that after the fact. And I do see another comment up here, but I want to let everybody know this is kind of be the last segment. So if you have any questions for Carmine Testa about Carmine's Pizza Factory or the Jersey Pizza Boys, ask them in the in the Facebook comments real quick. Um, but um, as far as futures of p uh, pizza competing in person, because, I mean, I met you in 2012, but you didn't start really competing like on that 2000, national level. 2015 was the first year I competed, and I only competed right. okay. one so time it took in Vegas a couple in the years. Pan Division. Okay. That's what I was saying. It took a couple years after I had met you before you actually started competing in that area. You were more focused on the talent your your, your children had, and that was great. But um, is it – I mean, what do you think that's going to look like in the future? I mean, we're always tr – we're all trying to figure it out right now. Yeah. What is your kind of prediction? Uh, my prediction is that, you know, it's going to go back to somewhat normal um, relatively soon. You know, I don't know, three months, six months. But I think, you know, it's something that is going to – we're going to get a, a handle on COVID. There's going to be a vaccine. And, again, dude, it's all about perception, right? So um, without trying to get anybody upset, you know, the flu hurts people. You know, getting in your car is dangerous. So if – if we looked at it like, oh, my God, you could get into a car accident, so I'm never going to drive again, you know, it's that's not a way to, to live your life. So, mm -hmm. you know, we need to be cautious and, you know, follow all the proper guidelines and, you know, social distancing and everything. But but I think at right. some point um, it's going to go back to normal. And, you know, for, for, the, for the meantime now, we're doing some stuff remote, you know, uh, with uh, some competitions remote. It's, you know, it's fun. It's, it's a way of – keeping in contact with everybody and, uh, you know, but it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to compete in culinary. It's great. You know, then, then you're going to really focus on visual, right? So your visual is going to be the most important aspect. And let's face it, Brian, we've been in the pizza business long enough. We know I've seen some really, really beautiful Kim Kardashian style pizzas that were like <laughs> terrible. 
right? <laughs> Terrible. Well, it, and then and then you see some pizzas <laughs> that like, you know, you don't even take a second look, and then you bite it, and your whole body just like is has this feeling like, what did I just <laughs> eat? It's so amazing. You know what I mean? It, so, it, it's 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 the don't judge a book by its cover, but sometimes you should. But you know, yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. An ugly pizza can taste great, but right. sometimes it it needs to look good too. And and actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it up again real quick. But uh, we are doing a virtual pizza cup, US Pizza Team Pizza Cup 2020. Uh, it's basically uh, it's a visual thing, but there is a culinary aspect. Now there won't be judges uh, tasting it, but there are culinary judges judging it. So I encourage anybody to sign up for that. As I'm talking, I'm trying to find that banner real quick. But um, it's one of those things where uh, we definitely want people to sign up because this is going to help, especially today, people eat with their eyes. You know, so you want to make sure that uh, – but that goes past the actual pizza. That means that you your pizzeria has to look clean. You, they have to see that you're taking care. You know, they're, they're eating with their eyes, but they're also judging with their eyes. So um, anybody who wants to jump into this, everybody's welcome. We just want people who can make some great uh, pizzas – Visit so are you saying it's team? open not even just to the U.S. pizza team? It's like it's open no, to it's not. Yes, no, it's open to everybody. Yes, and that's, ah, that's also, cool. I, I, we are we're putting it on. I hate this, but I mean, I hate. I like to associate the U.S. pizza team name with it, but it, that's one of the things, honestly, between you and me and everybody else watching, that we we get is that a lot of times when we put U.S. pizza team on it, people think only U.S. pizza team members can attend. Right. That's right. never really our our mission on this. We're always looking for new talent. Um, we're trying to incorporate the the other team. Um, Carmen and I have been talking about some things. Let's That's talk it. about uh, it. I was just I was just going to bring it up. You want me to bring it up a little bit? Oh, uh, sh sure. Yeah. Why don't we? Okay. Breaking news right here. We uh, why don't you go ahead, Carmen, and uh, kind of just get us going. Well, here real, 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 real quick. We were having a conversation not too long ago, and I was telling you when I opened up my first pizzeria. In 91, 91 through 96, every Thanksgiving, we used to have a, a like a flag football game. So the first year was just like the employees. And then from the first to the second year, you know, it was like some customers signed the clipboard that wanted to play. By year five, we had to have four different games going on, and kind of like elimination until you got like this championship team. And at that point, it got a little crazy because people were calling their cousin who played semi-pro ball or, you know, like yeah, the ringers. in Nebraska. <laughs> but we were talking, and I think, you know, again, if people are interested, and maybe we'll keep it local right now, is I think we should put maybe like a, a U.S. pizza team versus world pizza champions uh, pizza team, like flag football teams together and, and – have some competition, man, some friendly, fun competition. And the reason why I say that, which, by the way, I haven't even talked to any of my world pizza champion peers, so I hope nobody's mad. I haven't either, so, yes, but everybody's but learning the, it right now. The reason, the reason I say that is because we're all friends, bro. I have just as many friends from the U.S. pizza team as I do from the world pizza champions team, and I know a lot of them are friends, too. So, like, I saw the success it had in my restaurant. That was so much fun. And what was really fun was that, you know, we played once a year. The whole year, the team that won had the bragging rights and the team that lost had to like simmer in it until, you know, we got to play the following year. But I think it would be really cool maybe if we got, you know, a couple of players, we put two teams together, we do something locally. I mean, I'm sure I could get a couple of the World Pizza Champion guys, you know, to put some Ben Gay on or Icy Hot. You know what I mean? I personally, <laughs> I would probably, I'd probably be the coach. Maybe I'd go out for a few plays, but how fun would that be, bro? I got a mobile oven. Other guys got some mobile ovens. We can pull up the mobile ovens and have a pizza party. Maybe we can incorporate some type of, uh, you know, local charity, you know, raise some money for some local charity. And, you know, none of us want to get hurt. Everybody's got to work tomorrow. And you know what I'm saying? So like really just like a fun day of drinking some beer um, you know, playing some football, eating some pizza. I think it'd be really, really fun. And, and of course, you know, let me just put it out there. I'm, I'm going to say the U.S. pizza team is probably a three-point underdog already. If you know, with uh, against the world pizza champions in, in the flag football realm, you know what I mean? We tend to be round, but we got some force. 
Um, uh, no, and that's the thing. I'm just showing this, and I'm waiting for the the World Pizza Champion site to to load up so I can get the members from there. But um, yes, this is actually something that I had thought about as well on a different aspect, not flag football. But I think what I my my idea was to do a, uh, a charitable competition. So all the event fees, or you know, a, a 70 30 portion of the event fees go to charity, or you can pick charity. However, we want to distribute the funds. Sure. But it would be we could do like uh, something comparable to the Italian competition, where we do a classico, we do a pan, we do something uh, gluten free or pizza on the peel. But there's also a competition in Italy called Pizza for Two, where right. it takes two pizzaioli or a pizzaioli and a chef to actually make the pizza. So one guy does uh, basically the pizzaiolo does all the dough stretching out. And then the chef adds all the toppings. The pizzaiolo cooks it in the oven. And then the chef does all the finishing toppings. So once we get to that point, since it's a two-person, it has to be a U.S. Pizza Team member and a World Pizza Champion member. Because at love that, that point, well, I already know, I already know who I want my partner to be. I already know who I want my partner to be. I want Massimo from North Carolina. He could be the chef. That oh, dude, dude posts the most Massimo incredible Mariano. stuff on Instagram. That even if, even if I just ate, I look at his stuff and it gets and it gets me hungry. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, so I yeah. Got I, uh, Massimo and the pizza due. <laughs> okay, pizza due. All right. Yeah, I'll try to find the see if I can get those members up there. But I mean, this is just something that we were thinking of. Uh, I right. think it would be good right now to just uh, because there is no animosity between the teams. Uh, the pizza industry yeah, is no. the pizza industry, and this is the best part of the restaurant industry that uplifts and helps everybody else. Um, you know, it's it, all a lot of the other parts of the restaurant industry are very conniving and sniping and just it's it's just mean but the pizza industry always helps its brethren and i agree sister, man i don't I'm, think that's a word well one of the things one of the things that i noticed once i started getting to, to know everybody is how open everybody is especially like with you know mentoring and you know sharing you know different you know different aspects of their success i mean lots of lots of people have helped me over the years you know what i mean yeah Yo, and on both sides, and that's the thing is that, uh, you know, this is uh, pizza's pizza, so we're always trying to help each other out. And these are the World Pizza Champions. Yes, I'm showing them. Uh, but, the, I mean, all these guys, I'm friends with them on Facebook. I talk with them regularly. And that's the thing is that it doesn't matter. I, you know, if you play on the Dolphins and you play on the Cowboys, you could be friends. Uh, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So, I all right, so we've put it out there. I, I wasn't sure. I had it as a question mark whether we brought it up or not. But uh, maybe we, since we put it out there in the ether, that we can kind of get onto this. Right. Because I think it would yeah. be great um, to, to kind of do some help. And I think we were talking about maybe doing some regional stuff so we can help regional, different regional kind of charities kind of leading up to maybe the Super Bowl of, you know, the, the two teams. Right. Uh, but I That's going to take some wanna, work, but yeah. Yeah, right, but I, I mean, can you imagine? Wanna... If, just think about it. If it was to take off, and like you get a couple East Coast teams versus a couple Central teams versus a couple West Coast teams, and then like you know, the you know the championship, we'd have to figure out you know where and how we would do it, and and probably yeah. that would be something where there'd be the culinary the culinary um competition also. So you watch it, you know, you're watching football, say like uh in the morning and the next day, you know, we're watching a, a culinary competition, you know, it'd be pretty cool. Well, and that's, that's what I was saying is I would love to, if we have like a couple days, we make it a couple day event. We can do the, the friendly flag football the day before. And then now that we've all gotten dirty together, we're going to get into the kitchen and start making some pizzas. And it could be a, you know, a two day event, just kind of getting everybody ready to go. But, um, yeah. There can be a lot of good done with this and a lot of uh, notoriety and um, publicity drawn to these individual pizzerias, but as well as the pizza industry and just pizza sports in general. I mean, we haven't even talked about, and I don't even want to say this right now because it might just make my job harder, but acrobatics competition. We need right. those. Yeah, absolutely, Ooh, man. I think at this point, and I wanted to ask you is that, um, uh, and this is kind of a separate subject that I didn't even bring up, but I mean, I noticed when I came in, there was a lot of focus on acrobatics. There was a lot of acrobats. Um, but then as uh, within the first couple of years, it kind of shifted towards culinary again, as far as our, our team. Um, but I mean, some of that was some of these guys were aging out. And I don't want to say aging out. They can still do it more than I can, but right. they didn't want to do it as much anymore. You know, they wanted to focus on that. Um, we're, 
I think we need to kind of focus on getting the um, the and next the generation blood. of pizza spinners, yeah. you know, such as the Jersey Pizza Boys. Right. Yeah. You need you need some you need some new blood. And I think like anything else, I think it's a cycle. I think you know you, you had a lot of guys doing it, and then they converted over to culinary. So there's not as many yeah. doing the the freestyle now. And then the freestyle is going to get a kick. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get some new you're going to get some new faces coming in. And uh, so I think I think it's a cycle. I'm, listen, I'm excited. You know, in regards to Michael. You know, he's two years away from being 18. Um, he's going to be able to compete, I guess, when he's 18. And I'm hoping it makes a good showing when 18, 19, 20, that he's able to, you know, possibly win one of the freestyle acrobatic competition. And at the same time, at the same time, you know, get him involved in culinary, you know, and immediately make him a culinary threat. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, how cool would that be? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely. So, I mean, and, and that's what we're seeing with a lot, of, a lot of people. And it's, you know, there, there's no reason you can't do both. I had so many guys who do both. So it's, right. uh, I love it. I, I want to work more on this with you. Now it's out in the public and people hear it. So now it's going to be, um, we've kind of That's put right. our bosses into, into the spot of we need to make this happen. Yeah, so. that'd be pretty cool, man. Yeah, I, we gotta buy. We gotta buy like a commercial size tub of like icy hot or Bengay, but we'll be, we'll be good. <laughs> Yeah. We got some of those ice tubs like they have. Yeah, we, we should have it in a stadium that has, you know, all that for the NFL players of like that the locker room so we can get ready or ice down after the fact. That's right. where we need to do it. We, and we could totally get one of those big ones to sign off. I, yeah. I, I'll look at Lucas Oil uh, up in Indy just since I'm from there. But, uh, you know, you can look at yeah, – I mean, that's pretty Midwest. Uh, I did yeah. want to ask you, though, just real quick, um, as far as like some of these uh, – we're talking about the importance of competition. Now for the independents, a lot of times that comes out with a lot of PR, you know, just even to, to regardless of how they do the fact that they either are going to compete in it or have competed in it. Do you think that's kind of hurt some of these people recently since they don't have, there's been a lack of competitions in 2020? Um, I, it definitely helps. There's no question that it helps. I mean, from a personal point of view, when I was able to, have a couple articles and social media things came out about my win in 2019. I mean, I immediately saw a jump in business, no question. Uh, to answer your direct question, does it hurt? I mean, I don't think right now it's, it's hurting too much that they didn't have it, although it's a positive thing if you do have it. You know what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's a, you, don't, um, you don't miss what you don't know you had. You don't miss yeah, it. Yeah, so don't like know nobody, so okay. in other words, what I'm saying is it's, 2020 they never had the competition so you don't know who was going to win so that person who was going to win that we don't know yes he's missing out on that pr but does he know or does she know that they're missing out on that pr because it didn't happen you follow what i'm saying yeah yeah it's i mean what you don't know doesn't hurt you or you right know, you can't you can't long after what you didn't know was there so um, but I do want to let everybody know and, and yourself as well uh that you know we do have the uh virtual pizza cup coming up uh, the deadline is October 13th, so that's going to be next Tuesday. So, and it could be uh, it could be any kind of pizza, right? Any style, any kind of pizza. It's got to be within reason. Uh, it has to be within reason, and uh, we we're doing. It's going to be judged on presentation. Uh, it's I think it's about 70 30 visual, but we do have culinary judges. Uh, we need a side a profile shot that shows the corner choning, kind of the structural build. So we'll have right. culinary judges judging that. But also, um, you know, we don't want like I don't know if anybody's seen the Italian competitions. I don't want a ten foot red giraffe. That's not oh, presentation. Right. Yeah, it has yeah, to be yeah. within no, what reason. I, what I meant, like, like I could do a gluten free if I want to do a gluten free. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You can do a gluten right. free. It's it's it's, it's uh, yeah seventy thirty visual. But I mean, uh, we do have people judging the actual recipe and is that as well. So, um, I'm trying to put that up there here real quick. Uh, we'll just share it. But, um, yeah, uspeedsteam.com slash virtual2020. Uh, you know, go up here and sign up. You can get some uh, good ingredients from Fresh Origins. Uh, they do a lot of microgreens and uh, edible flowers. They can add some texture and look to it. Uh, you do not have to use them. But they are offering right. anything that you want. So, um, again, this is kind of late in the game for a lot of people. But, you know. It's it's another thing that we can at least offer to our you know to our crowd of competitors yeah. who want to get out. They're they're itching. They're like horses in the stables. They no, want absolutely, go. man. Listen, not seeing everybody in Atlantic City and even in Vegas in March, you you really like 
you, you, you go into like remit, like what do you call it? Like, uh, yeah. uh for, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Like <laughs> withdrawal. I'm, withdrawal. Exactly. You go into withdrawal. Yeah. You want to see everybody, you know? Absolutely. So, so um, yeah, if anybody wants to sign up for that, that's great. We're going to look at uh, trying to do something charitable uh, with the two teams. I think me and uh, Carmine are going to head that up. Uh, now yeah. that it's out there in the in the in the public, we have no choice. Yeah. So, so. if any of my world pizza champions see this and uh, you know they got a little game in them that they you know they can still juke a little bit, let me know, brother. Let me know. Yeah. Absolutely, you know? man. Well, I mean, uh, so I got two more last questions, real quick. Um, the future for the testas. What's going on? Because I know you got Carmine's going on. Is there anything coming up in the future for Carmine's Pizza Factory or anything else? So you know what? Yeah, I mean we're we're actually um, we're supposed to be doing a closing within the next two weeks. We're we're buying a, a a location right now. It's a it's a bar grill, which is eventually going to get converted into our first official Jersey Pizza Boys location. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> um, it's in you know it's in New Jersey. It's in my hometown of Woodbridge. And, um, you know, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, working on a brand and the, the right time, the right place came up. And I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to take the shot, man. I'm going to take it. And I'm excited. That it's going to be a Jersey Pizza Boys brand because, again, we've been working on it for a few years now. So I'm really, really excited about that. So I'll keep you posted. Well, I mean, so what's the, I mean, is it going to be different for Carmine's? Is it going to have a, an accent or a focus on spinning? Or Yeah, so so my restaurant, Carmine's, it's like a traditional corner pizzeria. It's got, you know, a big menu, you know, uh, a lot of pizza, of course, is the core. This is going to gear a little bit towards more smaller menu. It's going to have um, more of a variety of different kinds of pizzas. So I'm really going to. I'm really going to dive into really creative pizzas here, pizzas that you just can't get. You know, this this what I don't know, five thousand pizzerias in New Jersey. That's my daughter in the background, if you could hear her. I was wondering. But, I thought um, somebody was sneezing, but I was. Gonna... Yeah, yeah. So you know, we're gonna have you know different style pan pizzas, gluten free pizza. We're gonna make bar bar style pizzas, traditional New York style pizzas. So. You're going to be able to get pizzas with us that you're really not going to be able to get in a lot of these other places. So I think that's really going to be our, you know, our um, our thing for success that, you know, uh, we're just going to offer stuff that nobody else offers. And it's going to be really good. And I'm excited about it. You know what I mean? Awesome. Well, I, you know, I look forward to it. And it's, you know, having different concepts is great. And then you can just kind of branch out and go from there. Um, I, I've put up uh, up there, uh, carmine'spizzajc.com. That's where they can find your uh, your website and also the Facebook uh, page for the Jersey Pizza Boys. I guess it, past that, is there any other place they can reach you if they have questions or want to get in touch with you? I mean, is well, did you did you mention avenues? social media? If anybody you know wants to talk to me or ask any questions, you know they can reach me on my Facebook page. Uh, Carmine's okay. Pizza Factory Facebook page. They can, you know, Instagram, uh, Jersey Pizza Boys or, or Carmine's Pizza Factory. So just got to drop me some messages. That's it. I, I, yeah, I tell you what, just type in Carmine's Pizza Factory anywhere and it'll pop up and you will find any way to reach this man because he is very accessible. That's all I'm going to say. He's everywhere you want that, to bro. be. I appreciate it, but I'm a work in progress. <laughs> I'm not done yet, man. I'm not done. Well, that but you've been working for a long time, and I think you're 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 really mm -hmm. almost there. So, um, past that, is there one just last positive affirmation that you want to give to the industry right now, be it uh, culinary wise, uh, dealing with situations out there and or competitions? Just you know, one thing that you can tell the industry to make us all sleep well tonight. Um, well, I, the thing that jumps in my brain right now is just to tell everybody it's been a really really shitty year, which we all know, but you know. Don't give up one day at a time. Um, like anything else, man, this will pass and good will come out of it. We don't know what it is yet. That's the lining. You never know what the silver lining is yet. It's what happens. It's like, wow, you know. So some good will come out of this. You know, it, it could be that you, you know, you rebrand yourself to incorporate the business model, whatever it may be. But um, 
you know, we're entrepreneurs, man. We think on our feet. Our whole job is to survive and make a paycheck for ourselves for the next week. So the minute that's challenged, we're immediately reminded of what got us to be self-employed to begin with. It's that it's that mind. It's that drive. It's you know what I mean? So um, just don't give up. That's that's really what it comes down to. Don't give up. Better days are coming. I love it, man. And I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to be talking with you a lot more in the future again. Um, and I do appreciate, you know, it's been eight years, man. You were one of the first people I met when I began this particular part of my pizza journey. So I'm glad that, you know, we're still able to, you know, make some stuff happen here. So, and I'm proud Absolutely, of what you've right. been able to accomplish. And and um, Mike and Nikki, and I, I'm sorry, I don't even know your daughter's name. I'm Chloe. Chloe. That Yeah, I knew, it was something, I knew it was something cute like that. How dare you? Right. <laughs> But you guys, you guys have been doing some great stuff over there. So everybody, get up there, check out Carmine's Pizza Factory. Keep tuned for the Jersey Pizza Boys. That should be exciting. Where's that again? Where they gonna? Where's that gonna? It's gonna be. Go it's gonna be in Avenel, New Jersey, which is in Woodbridge Township. Woodbridge, Woodbridge. Okay. Um, all right. So, yes. Carmine, thank you so much for your time today. I know we had a little technical difficulty earlier, but uh, we pulled it out, man. Um, Very good, brother. It's a lot of fun, Brian. Great talking to you, man. You too. Uh, everybody else out there, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your questions and your interactions. Uh, stay safe and stay sane, and we'll see you on the other side. Later, Carmine. Take care, brother.